Hey folks, this is Dylan Beatty with a quick run through of uh, some of the cool features of this thing, the Onyx Books Note Air. Now, this is it's sold as an e-reader and like a, you know, handwriting device similar to the to the Remarkable tablets if you've seen those. Uh, but what it actually does is it's an e-ink tablet running a full unlocked Android 10.0 oper operating system. It's got Bluetooth, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got USB-C so you can hook up external drives and peripherals and stuff. And it's very, very cool. Now, it's sold as a e-reader, so it's got a library and bookstore built in. Those are the top two things on the left here. I just installed the Kindle app from the Play Store. There's a write-up on my blog about how you can get that enabled, because it's not quite that simple. Uh, but it works and seems to all be okay. Now where it starts to get really cool is here. It has a built-in notes app here. Now this thing, the, the stylus that it uses here, this is an EMR stylus, it's an electromagnetic stylus. So it's got a little coil inside the tip that picks up the EM field generated by the display. So there's no batteries in the thing, but it's not the same as the styluses you get with like an iPod Pro. It's not capacitive, it's different technology. And it is incredibly good. It is accurate and it is responsive. If we go in and, and open a new note here, um, basically for handwriting, this thing is, uh, the built-in notes app here is absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can draw, you can write, you can scribble. Now, handwriting is not really my jam, as you can probably tell, uh, but it's got, you know, it's got a, a pen, it's got a digital pencil, it's got a brush, it's got, it just feels nice. You know, it's a, it's a nice surface to write on, it's got some really nice sort of tactile uh, feedback, and it. it just feels nice to use it. Now, one of the things about this which is really interesting the display itself kind of has two update modes. Like, uh, what I'm gonna do here, I've got this thing streaming to a Google Chromecast, because hey, Android can do that. So I've got an HDMI recorder hooked up that is recording the Chromecast signal, so you can see the difference between what is appearing on the display and what is being rendered behind the scenes by the operating system, because there's something cool and a little bit weird going on here. So if I if I fire that up there, now if I write on this like a, you know, one, two, three, four, five or something, I, I scribble some, some content on the screen, watch the latency on the capture window there. So the screen, the, the e-ink display, that updates immediately, but it doesn't push changes to the, like the operating system's display context for a second or two, until you stop scribbling, basically. Um, now, the downside about that, as you'll see with some of the things we're going to look at later, is that only apps that are built for this device work well with handwriting. Everything else, you just get too much latency and, and delay on it. Um, but the built-in notes app on this thing is, is wonderful. It works really, really nicely, and you can do some, some very, very interesting stuff with it. Okay, let's take a look at some of the apps I got installed on here. So I have Brave, which is the web browser I use for most things. This is Brave browsing the New York Times. So again, bottom right corner there, that's uh, the, the Chromecast. So you can see the device is thinking in color. It's not a kind of monochrome operating system. It's a full color Android OS, just happens to be talking to an e-ink display. If you ever plugged your Amiga into a black and white TV back in the day, it's basically doing that. And uh, the e-ink on it looks Glorious. Let's take a look at a couple of other apps. Now, my go-to for writing stuff is Evernote. I've got Evernote installed on here. A lot of apps, when you open them up, they have kind of like, you know, a menu with some nice photography and maybe some animation. Those things don't look good because they're expecting, you know, 60 frames per second and millions of colors. They've got four frames per second in eight shades of gray. But once you get to the, the bit where you actually do the work, if I open up a, a new note on here, now I've got a, a Bluetooth keyboard connected to this thing, a little Logitech keyboard you can see at the bottom there. I go into a note, I open that up, that's full screen, and at that point I can just write. And the beautiful thing about it is uh, I'm filming on this inside because that's where the cameras are, but you can do this outside in brilliant sunlight. Now, if you look very closely, you'll see there's a little bit of ghosting. You can see the kind of little shadow of the Evernote menu there uh, behind, the, behind the display. Um, this thing here, this is the navigation ball. And when you tap on this, you get a radial menu. One of the things that this includes, there's a screenshot button, power settings, and there is a button that you can tap to do a force a screen refresh, which is that one there. And if you tap that, boom, it gets rid of all the ghosting. It doesn't do that 
every frame because it would be battery intensive and probably uh, you know not good for the display but it's uh if you do get too much noise or ghosting or anything you just tap that and it's gone away and there's a bunch of other useful features on that menu there as well Now you'll notice there, occasionally I found a couple of things you tap with your finger because the stylus doesn't work, or vice versa, there's a couple of things you do with the stylus because the, the finger doesn't always pick it up. Um, I think that's just, you know, uh, intermittent quirk of the hardware. It's a minor irritation, but not a showstopper by any extent. Okay, let's have a look at Google Keep Notes. Um, this one didn't work out so well. So Keep is like, you know, Google Evernote. It's Google's notes in the cloud. Now, for some reason, the formatting and the layout on this thing, whenever I try to do anything with it, you can see on the display capture here, um, even using a Bluetooth keyboard, it comes up in this really bizarre kind of black with a white border with a black border on a white background font, which is just not readable. You know, I, I could not find any way to make this thing legible. Um, now, I don't know, uh, Google Keep's never really been my thing. I thought it'd be interesting to, to try it out because it's Android, so it's a Google device. Um, but yeah, it's not, not nice. Now, there are some customization options that you can use on this. If you go into the uh, home screen here and uh, you do like a long press on any of these apps, you get a per app optimization uh, configuration where you can change things like what DPI should this application run at? Uh, do you want to override it and force web page fonts to be bold and various kinds of things like that? But even that, you know, the, the Google Keep app here, if I set the DPI to 200, which is the lowest possible setting, that makes everything tiny, really, really small text. I go in, I open it up again, and you can see it's exactly the same problem. Uh, it's all very small now, but when we actually open the note, we've still got this this unreadable, illegible font, uh, which just can't really work with very well. Um, close that down, go back into the, the, the customization window here. Now this time we're gonna whack it all the way up to 480 DPI, which is the, the highest setting it supports, and uh, Going to keep again, and this time everything is really, really big, uh, but we still have the same uh, weird problem with that font. We try and edit one of those notes, and it still comes up with this weird outliney, outliney, outliney thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, Google Keep, not really an option for this device. Let's have a look at Notion. Now, I don't use Notion very much. I know people who love it. Um, Notion just kind of seems to work. Uh, I open it up. I tweak the settings on this a tiny bit just to switch off bold. A lot of devices that use a, like a browser component to render their user interface, everything goes bold unless you disable that. But uh, yeah, Bluetooth keyboard hooked up, Notion works. This works nicely. Uh, so from something that works to something that does not work at all, this is Microsoft OneNote. And when you first open this up, so this is installed with the Office 365, it's the official Android app for, for OneNote. First of all, you're like, what do I do here? Now there is a menu, a hamburger menu here that is white on white. And uh, if you get that, that then gives you some options. But obviously, you know, even on the screen capture here, the little, the Chromecast in the corner, um, the UI just cannot cope with the, the color scheme and the, the settings that are being used on the device. So one note, eventually, once you've found the white on white hamburger menu, you can go in, you can add a new page. Now for just typing stuff with a keyboard, that, works, you know, I've got the Bluetooth keyboard hooked up here, I'm gonna go and type some stuff, that works pretty much as you'd expect it to. Uh, you can see Microsoft apps use a lot of kind of gray uh, hairline outlines on white backgrounds, which looks great on a like a retina type display, uh, does not work with the e-ink display, not even remotely. Uh, now, of course, the nice thing about OneNote is handwriting support, but because of the things that we've already talked about, um, the OneNote app doesn't know anything about the e-ink display. So when you draw something on it, nothing appears on the screen. It sends those uh, pen strokes down to the operating system. They bubble back up and it appears on the interface a little bit like, like there's too much latency for the thing to be usable. There really is. Um, if you are a, a handwriting aficionado who wants an e-ink device that works with Microsoft OneNote, uh, write to Microsoft and say, hey, can we have an e-ink surface? Because I think they'd probably do a pretty good job. This is not that device. OneNote on this is pretty much a non-starter. It just, it, it's not really usable for very much at all. Okay. Let's have a look. So I've got Word installed here. Uh, again, it's the Office 365 official Android app. Um, 
Word on an e-ink display, actually it works surprisingly well. Now, the blank document here, again, that's a gray hairline on a white background. You can't really see it on the e-ink display, but if you click on that, it gives us a blank document. It opens it up and it works. Uh, again, because I got a Bluetooth keyboard hooked up, once you got the document open and you're like, yeah, okay, thank you very much for the file name, you just type stuff. And uh, because typing stuff is just kind of adding letters to what's already there, it doesn't have too many problems with ghosting and, and Flickr and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, formatting works pretty well. We jump over here, let's uh, insert a table, and you can, yeah, you know, it works like Word. Some of the um, more advanced things, I guess, are gonna look a little weird, but, you know, Word was always designed to put black text on white paper, that's what it was built for, and uh, on this device, it works surprisingly well. Okay, last app I wanna show you on this thing is YouTube. Now, this is kinda of just because it's interesting. Uh, you are not gonna watch films on an e-ink display. That is absolutely not what it is optimized for. Uh, here is, is Scott Hanselman reviewing the Onyx Books Note Air, which is what kinda of inspired me to go out and pick one of these things up. Um, but as you can see on the corner, cause this thing supports uh, screencasting, you can just install Android apps and stream them via a Google Chromecast to anything that has an HDMI input, like the big TV in your hotel room, if you remember those. Um, and that's quite an interesting prospect for traveling with this device. Okay, the six million dollar question, does it run Doom? We well, gotta see if everything runs Doom. Um, yeah, it runs Doom. Doom is in the Play Store and it's ported to Android. So you can just run Doom. Uh, whether you can actually play Doom or not, that depends on how good you are at uh, navigating in grayscale with four frames per second. Uh, but again, if we bring up the Chromecast and look at the HDMI, it's running Doom perfectly smoothly. It's just not playable on the built-in screen. <laughs> Okay, so from Doom, which is kind of silly, to something that might actually be useful. Uh, there is an app called Termux, which is a terminal environment for Android. It's basically a, a bash shell with a package manager, so you can install uh, Node.js and a whole bunch of things. I got Termux on here. Um, I've installed Git, I've installed Node.js, I've installed SSH. And so this is basically a, a terminal that works uh, with an e-ink display. So uh, just to show you some of the stuff it can do, there you go, that's Node version 14. It's got SSH running on here. I've cloned the Rockstar repository, which is a Rockstar interpreter written in Node.js. So if I go into GitHub, go into the, the Rockstar folder in there, um, it's got Vim, so uh, you can go in, I can do it at viREadMe.app. <laughs> viREadme.md, viReadme.md is gonna actually open the README file. So there you go, that's Vim running on an e-ink uh, terminal over, um, this is all local, this isn't SSH yet. Uh, this is actually running locally on the device. And if I go into the uh, Satriani folder here, which is the Rockstar interpreter, um, I can run the yarn test suite for that. So if I do yarn test, there we go, that's gonna run the whole test suite for the Rockstar interpreter. Um, which is obviously something you definitely need to do on an e-ink device, but uh, so that's using Mocha and Node.js and a parsing expression grammar, whole bunch of stuff, uh, and you can run Rockstar in it because if I do node Rockstar dot dot slash example slash fizzbuzz dot rock, that is going to give us the classic fizzbuzz. So there you go. What an amazingly wonderful and versatile device. Uh, if you want to do any actual real work with it. It has SSH. You can SSH into, so it's connected to my home Wi-Fi. I'm gonna SSH into an Ubuntu box that I have running in the, the Azure cloud here. Um, and yeah, there it is. Boom, I'm in. Give it a second to connect and I have a full Linux SSH session. I got this little Logitech K380 Bluetooth keyboard hooked up and uh, in theory, I could use this to do real work as long as the work did not require any colors or more than four frames per second. Um, but it's actually really, really smart. It's an incredibly fun little device. Okay, time to see something really cool. Now, I love doing cryptic crossword puzzles and I like doing them on paper with a pen. I've used various kinds of crossword apps and stuff and uh, then I just, it's not the same, I think, with a pen in my hand. So I wanted to see, could I use this to do 
the Guardian crossword. So uh, if I open up Brave, the web browser here, this is how I figured out how we can do this. Um, so I got this, the camera recording on the left, and this is the, the screencast on the right, so you can see what I'm clicking. I'm gonna go to the Guardian website, go to that cryptic crossword. I'm gonna open today's crossword puzzle, and uh, the Guardian publish all their crosswords as PDF. So I can grab a PDF of that, which I can then open up in Acrobat Reader. That'll give me the PDF of the puzzle. So what I'm gonna do, tap this to get rid of the, the controls, two finger pinch to blow that thing up to make it full screen so it just fills the viewport. And then I'm gonna use the navigation ball, which is over here, tap that, and I'm gonna take a screenshot. So that's basically gonna give me a high res PNG of today's crossword puzzle. But then I can jump across into the notes app that we saw a little earlier and I can open up a new note. So I'm gonna go into notes, I'm gonna start a new notebook and then I am gonna import an image onto this note. So I'm gonna drop down there, hit that, add images. And I'm gonna find the screenshot that I just took. Just that one there. Hit the little, uh, this thing's a tick in the bottom right corner. It took me a minute to figure that out. And now I'm just gonna drag that out so that that fills the, fills the note that I'm working on. And there it is, done. And now I can grab one of the, the pens or the handwriting or the pencil, you know, any of those things, they all work. Um, and I have a digital crossword. I have a digital crossword that I can actually scribble on as if it was, you know, real paper. The tactile experience of this is just phenomenal. It really, really is. Uh, and so, you know, you can sort of cross out the clues as you go. Uh, let's take a look. What do we got here? Well, it looks like uh, we've got, uh, there we go, stretch from billionaires. Elon Gates. Look at that just like filling it in on the back page of a printed newspaper. And uh, if you wanna do that thing, you know when you think a clue might be an anagram and you're like, I'm gonna draw the letters in a little circle to help me figure it out. So let's find an anagram clue. We got a, um, there we go, seven down. Actor in a rumpled Mac. Rumpled is probably an anagram indicator there. So actor in a, let's scribble that out. There we go. And looking at it, I think that is R. A-I-N-C-O, raincoat. Yeah, there we go. Um, and this is great. This is the, the point where you kind of forget that you're using a device because it just feels so tactile and so immediate. Um, it is literally like, you know, digital paper. It's absolutely wonderful, really, really is. Okay, last thing to show you. A um, couple of folks on Twitter are like, can it do sheet music? Uh, yeah, well it does PDFs with an e-ink display, so it will do sheet music. This is the score for the, the Amelie theme by Jan Tiersen. Uh, but what's nice is because it has Bluetooth, you can hook up something like this. This is an, an Air Turn Pad Pro. This is a Bluetooth foot pedal that uh, basically lets you do page up and page down by stamping on it with your feet. So you put this on the floor underneath your piano or at the, you know, you're playing guitar, you, you put this on the floor in front of you and you play along to your sheet music, da 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 and you get to the end of the page, you stamp on that, and that will flip over to the next page. And that uh, works very, very nicely as well. So you can, you can see the, the page turn animation there. That's all, folks. Thank you for watching. Uh, check out the full review at dylanbt.net slash books, B-O-O-X. Uh, I'm Dylan Beatty, and I'll see you on the internet.